Hello everybody! Yes, this is the first time that I'm on camera. Um, I was talking to a friend about like how could I improve my videos and they said that it would be a good idea to maybe have something going on and I was really shy about it because I don't know, I'm not like a very like a person that likes to be too much on camera or I don't even like taking pictures but I thought it'd be fun because it's been a while since I've done makeup and I really miss it, it's really fun. I'm not really good at it as you can see but I can always try. But anyways, this channel is about controversial poetry and because of that obviously we're gonna talk about poetry. And this poem is from T.S. Eliot, it's called The Wastelands, no it's from the book of the wastelands or the compilation of poems from the wastelands but the poem itself is called the burial of the dead so it's it's a very important uh compendium and it's very known because the author is one of the most influential authors from the 20th century so it's pretty good it's pretty interesting So before I start, I would really appreciate if you guys could leave me a like or a comment or anything that would help me improve. This is my first video, so I might seem a little bit awkward or uncomfortable, but I'll try to get better. And also let me know if you prefer me being on camera or just me posting my art. Which, anyways, like before going into anything, like I'm gonna show my art of the week because I, I don't want to showcase like my art. I was also thinking of opening a TikTok account for art, but we'll see about it. Anyways, let's start the poem. April is a cruelest month, breeding lilacs out of the dead land, mixing memory and desire, steering dual roots with spring rain. Winter kept us warm, covering earth in forgetful snow. Feeding a little life with dried tubbers. Summer surprised us, coming over the Stonburgers. With a shower of rain, we stopped in the colonnade and went on in a sunlight into the Hofgarten and drank coffee and talked for an hour. Being guard, well, this part is like something, I think, in German. Um. And when we were children, is staying at the Archduke's. My cousins, he took me out on a sled. And I was frightened, he said. Marie, Marie, hold on tight. And down we went. In the mountains, there you feel free. I read much of the night and go south in the winter. What are the roots that clutched? What branches grow out of the stony rubbish? Son of a man. You cannot say or guess, for you know only a heap of broken images where the sun beats. And the dead tree gives no shelter, the crickets no relief, and the dry stone no sound of water. Only there is shadow under the red rock, coming under the shadow of this red rock. And I will show you something different from either your shadow at morning striding behind you, or your shadow at evening rising to meet you. I will show you fear in a handful of dust. You give me hastens first a year ago. They called me the Hyacinth Girl. Yet, when we came back, late from the Hyacinth Garden, your arms full and your hair wet, I could not speak, and my eyes failed. I was neither living nor dead, and I knew nothing. Looking into the heart of light, the silence. Madame Sostris, famous clairvoyant, had a bad cold, nevertheless, it's not to be the wisest woman in Europe. With a wicked pack of cards, here, said she, is your card, the drowned Phoenician sailor. Those are pearls that were his eyes. Look! Here is Belladonna, the lady of the rocks, the lady of situations. Here is a man with the staves, and here the wheel, and here is a one-eyed merchant, and this card, which is blank, is something he carried on his back which I am forbidden to see. I do not find the hanged man for death by water. I see crowds of people walking round in a ring. Thank you. 
visit dear Miss Ekitown, tell her I bring her horoscope myself. One must be so careful these days. Unreal city under the brown fog of winter down. A crowd flowed over London Bridge. So many. I had not thought death undone so many. Sighs. Shot and infrequent were exhaled, and each man fixed his eyes before his feet. Blood up the hill and down King William Street, toward St. Mary, while North kept the hours. With a dead sound on the final stroke of nine, there I saw one, I knew, and stopped him crying, Stetson, you who were with me in the ships at Miley, that corpse you planted last year on your garden, has it begun to sprout, will it bloom this year? Or has a sudden frost disturbed its bed? Oh, keep the dog far hence, that's friend to mend. Or with these nails, he'll dig up again. You, hypocrite lecture man, simple man forever. I think that part's in French. So the two themes that are here is being unconfrontational and I guess superficial. But going more into detail, the Bible and Tristan and Isolde, which is a play, are the most mentioned here, are the ones that have the most important things. Um, they are, the poem is talking about how people have forgotten God and have walked away from him, him to pursue more superficial and unimportant things. So... They are not even confronting the reality of their lives, the reality of the problems that we're really facing, or even other people are facing. The second one is talking about, when, when it comes to like Tristan and Isolde, he just makes like a transition talking about deep love and how it can only be pursued by giving it a shot. Now, when I was reading this relation, like, I didn't really get why he was talking about that but i guess from my own analysis i'm thinking that it is because like personally nowadays i do feel like people don't are like so scared and they don't even try to find love just because they're scared of the pain what they could face but i don't know from my point of view what i took out of the text that could be a big one since the whole theme is like is like being a coward or unconfronting not not confronting situations so then also talking about religion it's really funny because i was not even looking for anything that had to do with witchcraft or anything related to that but this poem even talks about that and the second theme the second part of this poem talks about the witch the clairvoyant with a Rufina funny name. So she is giving the client the like all of these like tarot cards, all of these like really unreliable things. Like the author thinks that they're really unreliable. And it's like so magical and so interesting, but like we have walked away from I'm guessing his Christian. But he believes that we have walked away so far from God that we are seeking these things are so unreliable. And also, um, water is used as a salvation, like equals salvation, and yet the clairvoyant is telling him to be scared because he might die by water or something that has to do with water. So it's again, it's just how we walked away from God and like have no faith. And even though we are scared to live, we're also scared to die. But we are not even really processing the fact that death will come to us. That's something that will happen to us. And a lot of us don't even like really think about that moment or like that's a reality. I mean, other people are like seeking it. And I know they're present, am I right? But <laughs> um, no, seriously, I don't, I don't feel like people really talk too much about depression or that, that sort of thing after World War II. Again, I don't think mental health was really talked about around that time. But anyways, I guess it was just a gift to be alive after all of that. So, 
then he's talking about the, the London Bridge and how there's it's so crowded and how people are just walking around going nowhere, right? And he's just trying to explain how a lot of people are just walking with a, their spirit, their soul just dead, their minds dead, going in life with no purpose, nothing to live for. And basically, he's just like really disappointed that we have come to that point where we don't even know what we're living for. We don't even want God. We just focus on the artificial. We focus on the things that we don't need. Do I think this actually happens to this day? Because again, in most of my videos, I talk about the controversial poetry and I think like, is this something that Anisha, this is still happening to this day? Because again, this is not the most me poem. And I don't think it is. I think it's happening still. I think with you, you can just see from like TikTok and I think like American culture being the most influential around the world. At least even from when I lived back home, it was the most influential. And an interesting part and something that I heard in I think a podcast or a video was like Americans only focus on their politics, their issues. Like you rarely see any American people talking about third world co country um, issues. I'm not saying like everyone, because not. I think it's like culture in general. They mainly only think about themselves. Again, I do believe the humans are selfish in general. But I know that a lot of people try to bring awareness to issues that we could contribute to. Most of us are not doing anything. We're just turning a blind eye and just seeking for the next nice car, the next nice uh, Gucci shoes, whatever is else that's like superficial and it fills you up for an instant going shopping. But then what? Is that what you're looking for? Shopping? You know, uh, it could be uh, many like drinking, many other things that are superficial and you know we could help so much by just doing like one little action just donating from top to town volunteering or even just bringing awareness and obviously some people do it but not everybody i do understand that it's really hard to face those things and it would be really bummy if we were, we were just talking about all the awful things that happen in the world and just focusing on that like i'm not saying that you should just go crazy about it but i but i guess like bringing awareness to it and like thinking about it time to time won't hurt anybody it's just, like helping other people so i totally think that um also so instead of talking about problems that do happen now like out of our country or things that are really serious <laughs> We talk about the next YouTube scandal with Shane Dawson. Oh my gosh, she might be coming back to YouTube. I mean, I do think he's like really sus and he should go to jail probably. But I don't think that's like the most important thing. And that's the thing that gets the most views. We're talking about Kendall Jenner, the whole like generous family situation. Um Jeffree Star, new makeup, I don't know, like pop culture stuff. And they get the most money for acting. Like, I still don't understand how that works. I still don't understand how celebrities get that much. I don't know. I don't know anything, but I'm gonna tell you that's sussy. So, Somehow we focus more on that when it's like so. I guess it's just easy to digest. Like I'm not gonna tell you like how dare you? You're such an awful person for liking that stuff. Like no, I like it. I think it's fun. Um. Then again, there's the whole thing about religion, which again I'm Christian, so I have to mention it. But 
again, I, I'm going to mention this in every video. I don't think that I'm better just because I'm Christian and that you're wrong because you're from another religion or you believe in witchcraft or spirituality. Like, it's your life. It's up to you. Um, I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. So, yeah, from my point of view, because I'm Christian, I completely see the how he, he got to this conclusion. I can see the connection. Because, yeah, totally, like, <laughs> the more people are not really staying in religion, like, it has its good things and bad things, because, I mean, we're, like, more open in some things that we're used to really shut down, because how people would read the Bible, because I do still believe some people read the Bible wrong, and I think that homophobia is fine, so, I guess it has its things, but what I do agree in the point is that people have become, like, more superficial, have, like, no motive to live. Or have become more selfish. I don't know. I didn't live like at that time, so uh, that's how, that's just how I feel, you know. But I also feel like people are superficial in, in general. Now, when he mentions the witches and the crystals and everything, he does believe that it's unreliable, and he does believe that it doesn't doesn't go anywhere. And if you guys want to know my whole opinion about crystals and witchcraft, it was my last video. You can just go to my channel and check it out. I don't have any videos, so it's really easy to find. And I guess the thing that pisses me off the most, and that I still, it's something that I have to face, like day to day. Um, people find these artificial things and this um really expensive lifestyle the most important thing so they will put their money and their debt into this pretending to be something they're not and why like rather buy yourself a car it's like super expensive but then the next week you will have no food for what and if anything goes out of balance or there's i don't know you lose a job or anything you're done with why? Why is that so important? Why is a brand or the next collection of whatever brand more important than basic things like food or even helping other people that are like starving? Other people that are like really struggling. And I'm not saying throw all your money into it, but you don't need like five dollars like anything bro like help them out you don't even have to give them money but for some people it's even embarrassing some people think that people are less because they're have a less paying job than them okay. yeah anyways so those were my conclusions i hope you guys like it i hope i wasn't too awkward I don't know if I want to see myself when I edit this back. <laughs> I'm gonna feel so weird. Okay, anyways. Um, I hope you like my art. And if you did like my piece, the piece of the week, uh, you can check out my Instagram, my Red Bubble account. Again, if you have any suggestions, please let me know. And I'll see you later.